This is the Bob Cordaro Show on TV. They fought for us, now he'll fight for you. The pursuit of justice and liberty. It's the Bob Cordaro Show on TV. And now, Bob Cordaro. Great, good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. My name is Bob Cordaro, and this is The Bob Cordaro Show on TV. This show is devoted to the greatness of our area, northeastern and central Pennsylvania. So we accentuate the positive. Is it cheerleading? Darn right it is, and we need more of it. First, we're joined in our regular health segment by Dr. Brian France, who is tops in his field of dentistry and a world-recognized periodontist. He's going to talk about dry mouth. Then our Power Brunch Player of the Week, Kate Dempsey-Jones. She runs Goodwill Industries here in Northeast Pennsylvania. I've often wondered, what does Goodwill do? And as I've looked into it, I've discovered they do a lot, much more than I could have known. And if I guessed right, more than all of you knew. Kate is the CEO, and she'll discuss the impact Goodwill has on our area and so many people with special needs. Goodwill is at the core of our community, and I can't wait to talk about that. It's all good. So with the help of God, our families, and each other, let us begin. Rebecca Martino is the owner of Stately Pet Supply, a unique pet store experience in Clark Summit. Rebecca is also a vocal advocate for a local business and buying local. Well, you know Stately uh, Pet Supply has been with us, and Rebecca Martino, the owner, and she's been... Keeping us up on topics that matter a lot. I've gotten a ton of feedback, Rebecca. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, That's good. So what do, what do you want to tell us about this week? So an important thing that I think is um, it, it's coming out in the industry more and more, but I'd like to really focus on it more. One of my favorite things to talk about in pet food is a variety. By the way, the cat thing yeah. with their tongues. Yeah. I had more response for that than anything we've uh, done. I, I think uh, that was an amazing statistic. That is an amazing statistic. And it, it really brings to light that though our human eyes look at our cats at a bowl of water for a long amount of time, it's important to uh, specify that they're there for a while, but it doesn't mean they're making much progress. And yeah. that's the hard truth but about you, cats. You, you touched when we got into that subject, this low grade dehydration. Mm. And, and there's pain and there's illness and so mm -hmm. forth that our pets don't show us. There's reduction in healthiness mm -hmm. that our pets don't show us. And so you're going to talk about their diet a little bit how to make mm -hmm. sure that it's optimal. Mm -hmm. So here's how I can actually tie in the hydration that we mentioned with cats last time to pets uh, and even dogs this time. So, mm -hmm. you know, cats being picky, dogs. You know, you have to keep them out of the garbage and out of the cat litter box. You know, dogs are much more easy uh, animals to appease. Yeah. But where you can bring hydration into everyone's life, and especially a dog, is through toppers. Toppers are a way to keep the base food, which in most households is a dry kibble. Uh, it's very convenient. Scoop, serve, done. You keep it in a bin next to your dryer in the garage, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um and many dogs, there are estimated 80 to 90 million dogs in the country. Many do just fine on it. But one way that you can bring variety to their life, which is better for all of our immune systems, uh, what's called the gut uh, microbiome, is to add toppers. So you keep the base food the same, but add superfoods to the top. And I think table food gets a bad rap. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're physically seated at your table and you're feeding your dog, you're going to create a beggar. So, okay, on the food on the table must be table food. So don't do this. Well, that's right. Don't do that. But table food is food that we've made for ourselves. And when you look at dog food, whether it's chicken and rice, you know, beef and rice, it's not chicken from Jupiter. Yeah. It's just chicken. And it should be of the same quality that we're about to eat. But prepared for a pet should be lean. And when you can make it fresh... That's even better. So um, a neat product, if I can mention a specific brand yeah. that we carry, is called Green Juju. And they take a lot of workload off the parents, the pet parents, and blend all these superfoods into this frozen cute little container. It's a butternut squash, which will bring you a soluble fiber and a lot of uh, beta carotenes because it's in that kind of orange uh, food group. Um, Turmeric, ginger, 
cauliflower, all these things all in one. And you just kind of thought and slap it on top and call it a day. And you're bringing richness and longevity. Your dog, a lot of studies, one from Purdue University in particular, um, saw that there was almost a 90% reduction in bladder cancers in Scottish Terriers when they integrated fresh food into the dog's life. Yeah. It's amazing. So it, I come to Stately Pet Supply mm -hmm. and I tell you, oh, this is my dog. This is the, you know, the type of dog it is. Mm -hmm. This is what we normally feed him uh, or her. And you can then rec basically give him a supplement. Yes. So I like to ask, tell me what your dogs like. Do they, do they, are they the kind of dog that will eat broccoli from right out of the fridge? Fine. I can work with that. Do they prefer, prefer more of like a poultry or a meaty kind of thing? I can work with all of it. There's something out there for every dog. And just like us, it makes a difference. Big time. Rebecca, uh, great to be with you again. And, uh, always great to be at Stately Pet Supply. Thanks for having me again. Like Thank it here. You. Thanks. Thank you. Pat Sandone is a successful investment banker and entrepreneur who is president and founder of The Guide App, a health and wellness application you can use to guide your life. Pat Sandone from The Guide App is with us and for this month's segment. Pat, things are going well. You've launched in a number of locations and with a number of uh, first responders. Yeah, we're, we're launching with uh, police departments, fire departments, veterans groups all across the country. Fabulous. I, I, you know, we knew it was coming. It's a little later than maybe you thought, but those, you did it right. And, and so now this month, just days ago, uh, you, you did your launch. Yeah, we're, we're, we're launching. And it, it, the, the, the difference we make is that um, for veterans and first responders, uh, what, where, where we impact them is by allowing them to build resiliency um, and, and helping them deal with job-related stress. I mean, one of the most stressful jobs you can ever imagine. And by delivering proven practices that build resiliency and help deal with job-related stress that they can do on their schedule, they can do uh, anonymously, and they can do when it's convenient for them, has really allowed us to make a big impact. One of those practices is meditation. Um, and it's something that I've actually been doing for 20 years. Um, and we teach of, uh, several different types of meditation, but one is called meditation for champions. And it's a really simple type of meditation that really allows you to focus your attention. For so many of us, if we ever really notice our attention comes and goes, it drifts to our thoughts, to external um, things in the external environment. It, it's a powerful practice that over time builds your ability to focus your attention wherever you want it. And it's really just about quieting your mind um, and closing your eyes and then focusing your attention on your breath. And then over time, it, it, that your ability to hold your attention there mm -hmm. strengthens. And as you can strengthen that, then you can focus your attention wherever you want it, which has profound impacts in anyone's ability to be great at what they set their mind to. So it's not the old school meditation that a lot of us would have thought was a little shishi. Uh, it's, it's, it's real stuff that makes things happen for you. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, if you're an athlete, if you're somebody like yourself who's um, got a TV show, if you could have better control of your attention, right? Think of the power that that has and really take control of it. For, for a lot of us, I mean, me included, that can be a problem. In this practice, practice daily over time, can make a vast difference there, which can help anyone perform better at whatever they want to focus on. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, meditation. Yeah. Another of the components of the guide. Another app. one of the daily practices we teach. Excellent. Thank you, Pat Sando. You're welcome. Good to see you. Dr. Brian France is an internationally recognized periodontist. He heads a multi-specialty dental practice in Dunmore and has consulted, lectured, and taught around the world in his chosen field. We're joined on a regular health segment once again by uh, my friend, Dr. Brian France. Brian, welcome. Good morning, Bob. Always good to be with you. The dry mouth is the subject. It, I know. It's, it's, it's poo-pooed. Yep. But it's a big deal. It's a big deal. And, uh, you know, Bob, what, we're what I'm trying to accomplish over the next couple of weeks is to essentially talk about uh, common problems that involve the mouth that may oftentimes be missed. Uh, so, and dry mouth is certainly one of them. Dry mouth, or, you know, professionally known as xerostomia, 
Uh, it's really not a diagnosis, but it's a symptom. Uh, dry mouth essentially means reduction in saliva in the mouth. And the consequences of that can be devastating on many levels. Uh, first of all, it's very painful. The saliva forms of, is a, a, a very, has, serves a very important function in the oral cavity. It's a lubricant keeps, so that we can eat comfortably, but it also serves as a buffer and it keeps the, the mouth in a very neutral environment. And so many times when we get cases in our, in our office, uh, we see complete devastation of the teeth and sometimes it doesn't make sense. You know, these are people maybe that are taking good care of their teeth, but despite that, they've had a lot of cavities very quickly and they don't know why. Well, when we get into the medical history, oftentimes we find that their saliva flow is not adequate. And so they've lost the buffering capacity. Uh, common causes of dry mouth, medications, many times, for example, patients undergoing chemotherapy for cancer mm -hmm. or radiation therapy, uh, different medications, anti-anxiety agents, uh, you know, Valium, et cetera, uh, sleeping agent, uh, sleeping pills, et cetera, can dry antihistamines, uh, can dry the mouth out and therefore, again, reduce the buffering capacity. So medications, <clears throat> oftentimes patients uh, have autoimmune conditions, Jogren syndrome, those patients have a dry mouth. Uh, and then also we can have simply a, a pathology of the saliva gland that needs to be evaluated. Treatment. Yeah, so the treatment, again, depending on the diagnosis, right? We always talk about that. Uh, accurate diagnosis first. Consultation with the physician, evaluation of saliva flow to make sure it's not a problem with the gland, medication to stimulate the saliva, and in a lot of cases, simply over-the-counter artificial saliva, xylitol tablets, things that they can buy in the drugstore that are aimed at re improving saliva, uh, oftentimes are very successful in helping patients overcome this very common problem. Dry mouth. Thank you, Dr. France. My pleasure, Bob. And now, the Sunday Brunch Power Player of the Week on the Bob Cordaro Show. So the CEO of Goodwill Industries of Northeast Pennsylvania is Kate Dempsey Jones. I've known her forever. And I just thought we have to have an opportunity to find out what Goodwill does, because I know they have a huge impact throughout the region. And I thought it was important to find out about that mission. So we welcome you, Kate. Thank you, Bob. All right. Tell me first about you a little bit. You you became the CEO about seven years ago. Seven years in August, yes. And so you run this thing. Mm -hmm. Where did you Where did you work before uh, Goodwill? How did you get into this? Well, position? Um, kind of a circuitous route, I guess. I worked at Keystone College for about thirty three years. But during that time, I became involved with Goodwill as a board member. Hmm. Uh, and when the uh, my predecessor, Jerry Langan, was... Oh, he's a great guy, Yes, Jerry, he yeah. is. He has big shoes to fill. Yeah, um, but that, when that, you, yeah that alone mm -hmm. had to be intimidating. He was Goodwill. Absolutely. Jerry. Absolutely. Yeah. He, when he took over... Um, the organization was in was not in a really good place, and what he did to turn the agency around and have it grow the way that it did um, that's, that's a tough act to follow. Yeah. It absolutely is. But he's also been very very supportive of me from day one. We were able to work together for a few years yeah. um, full time before I uh, assumed the mantle. But I, as I said, I had been a, a volunteer. I had been a member of the board. What were you doing at Keystone? Oh, a lot of different things like over 33 years. A lot but of administration. I, I did. I did. The yeah. um, uh, largest portion of my time was really in institutional advancement, um, working with the with the alumni, with the major donors, with the board of trustees, and and um, the president very so closely. You've been in this nonprofit space forever. Kate Dempsey Jones for a long mm. time. I've never worked uh, in a for profit enterprise, and it fit like a glove. It did. I I I. I Noted the transition was incredibly smooth. Uh, so first, congratulations well, for that you. and for doing a stellar job over the last seven years. Now, let's let's get to Goodwill itself. OK. Is there a mission statement? There is. Basically, our mission is to provide opportunities for individuals with any kind of barrier to enhance their lives. 
uh, whether that's through uh, living in a group home, being in a pre-employment or a supported employment program, um, we try to, we really strive to help people live their best life. And a lot of the work that we do right now is with those with intellectual and developmental disabilities. We have a large, um, it, we, we like to change the names of things in um, government funded programs. There's always a million acronyms, mm -hmm. um, but we have, it's called community participation supports. And it's, it was previously called a, you know, an adult day program. That's a pre-vocational program. Um, currently we have about, I want to say in excess of 55 or so individuals that are enrolled in that program. Adjacent to that is our small group employment program, which is also really a pre-vocational program mm -hmm. as well, but it um, helps people start to gain some really basic skills for those that are interested in pursuing employment. Um, some of our folks there end up going on to supported employment and, and then community employment where yeah. they don't have any supports at all. Um, but we currently have, I, I want to say, over 60 people enrolled in the, in the small group employment program as well. Um, and these are, 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 th are, are all of those primarily uh, mentally challenged or Intellectual and developmental and disabilities, yeah. yeah. Yeah, some um, some of the folks we have will be some of those beautiful people on the planet. Yes, and if if you want to feel good, um, at least I know I do. Um, I take a walk into small group or into the the, yeah. the day program, and you're like a rock star when you walk in. Everybody's so you know they're happy to see you. They immediately put a smile on your face, and you're high fiving and fist bumping, and um, I I thoroughly enjoy that. That part yeah. of the job when I get to actually go out and, and and be with the individuals we serve. And we also have, we operate 10 group homes or community living arrangements where folks reside with us 24-7. And they are in Lackawanna and Luzerne County. And those folks, um, it's just, it, it's amazing when you see where they are when they come to us. Um, oftentimes, they're, they've been through the system yeah. a lot. Yeah. And... Um, a lot of times we'll, we'll see people come to us, they might be nonverbal. They have the ability to be verbal, but they just have shut down for whatever reason. Um, but to see them come in and to see them, basically it's, you know, it's like we were, we had our first apartment, you know, yeah. the first time you're living on your own, they have supports, obviously our staff is there, but um, they're adults. And adults should be living on their own when they can. There, there was a, a, a woman, and she was older than me, but she lived down the street with her parents, and her parents were elderly. Mm -hmm. And I thought... What happens? Uh, and I don't know what happened, mm -hmm. but that's the type of thing your group homes cater to. Yes. Like, okay, you can now be on your own mm -hmm. with our guidance, with our help. Mm -hmm. that's, that's amazing. We'll see a lot of families when they know that they are getting to that point. Um, and they want the transition to be while they're still living. Mm -hmm. um, so they'll reach out, they'll get their loved one in a group home. And so when they pass, it's, it's, they've already had, they have a home. They yeah. know that their, their loved one's going to be taken care of. Okay. Which agencies, uh, governmental agencies mm -hmm. do you work with most often? And then which nonprofits? I mean, say ARC or whomever. You know? um, well, as far as agencies, government agencies are concerned, the majority of folks that we work with have what's called a waiver for services. And they are funded through the Office of Developmental Programs, which is an arm of the Department of Human Services for the Commonwealth. And these are all people who would fall through the cracks otherwise. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They, they, there is a a saying that's, you know, kind of graduating to the couch, you yeah. know, people stay in those with uh, intellectual and developmental disabilities in high school, you know, the, yeah. those that are in a, in a special ed program and they can stay in, I think until they're 25, maybe. Um, but those folks, once they graduate, they've had services basically from day one. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, now you need a whole new set of services. And it's not as seamless a transition as, mm -hmm. as you would think because they have to apply for those services. They have to be granted a waiver for those services. There's only so many waivers available. So oftentimes um, people are on waiting lists. So Goodwill does vocational mm -hmm. training for mm -hmm. those who need it the most. They do living skills yep. and, and opportunities Life skills. For, mm -hmm. for those who need it the most. 
What are some other aspects of Goodwill Industries? Well, we're a little bit different um, than most Goodwills in that um, through Jerry's vision, um, probably now it's close to 30 years ago. Uh, yeah, when it went he, on forever. Yep, Go ahead. When he purchased, um, he purchased the former North Scranton Junior High School and um, worked for more than 20 years to get the project done over there to save that from the wrecking ball, yeah. really. Um, it's such an iconic building, um, you know, right that, at a huge intersection, you know. Um, so many people remember growing up, the big star on, you know, on yeah. North that, you know, during the holidays and and it is still lit every year Great. at the holidays. Great. But um, yeah, um, having the, the theater, uh, refurbished, which everybody uses, and it's yes. a great facility. It's a terrific facility. It really is. There's a there's a story about it. We had um, Joanne Arduino from uh, from Ballet Theater um, was a consultant for us. Uh, she brought some folks in, her contacts in from New York, mm -hmm. um, take a look at the at the theater and make sure we we did it right. Um, the original uh, end of the theater. We were told if we extended it, I, I can't remember eh, about this much, um, yeah. then we would be able to accommodate more, more shows. And um, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. So there is a kind of a playing hurt. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead, I'm, yeah, go ahead. Play through. <laughs> uh, there is a ghost line that was installed on the theaters because it's a historic building. So you can see where the original theater, the original stage huh. ended. And then there's the little extension on it. Um, but it really is a state of the art theater. It's used extensively by the community from you know, oh, yeah. dance studios. I and, saw the nutcracker there. Oh, gotcha. Well, so there's apartments there. How many apartment there units? Are, there are. There are 52 apartments. And Focus they are, primarily on home. It's senior living. Okay. You know, it's there is an age requirement and there are also income requirements. Some, um, some of the apartments are funded through... Um, <laughs> excuse me, through Section 8. Mm -hmm. And we, one thing that we did that I'll be forever grateful for was we immediately hired a management company as soon as the, mm -hmm. um, as we knew the project was going through. So they, they were able to work with us throughout the project. They do all the screening for all the applicants. They manage the waiting list. They manage who moves in, who moves out. So you um, stick to your expertise and, exactly, and, and still do good for, yes, for that population. Yes, and not get into the, you know, who knows who and someone's going to get in because they know someone else. And we really did not, we didn't want it to be that. We yeah. wanted it to be the, the amazing resource it is, but we didn't want any, um, any favoritism showed. So honestly, I mean, I get calls all the time and I direct them right to the property manager yeah. and say, he'll, you know, that he'll see you through the process. Give me the scope of it. So we talked about about 110 direct clients, plus you've got 50 apartments, plus you've got the, give me the scope in terms of employment. How many people do you have and what's what's your budget in, on an annual basis? So we're probably about a $14 million organization. We have 10. You get a lot out of that. Yes. Um, yes. I'm sure you find that that's not a lot of money. It's not, it's not enough. You know, I mean, that's why yeah. we have the stores. You know, people talk about, um, they think about Goodwill, they think about the retail stores. And they're wonderful. They are our fundraising arm. We don't do a lot of the They provide some of the traditional, employment, too. Oh, absolutely. For, for your vocational. They do. They right. provide um, almost like a lab setting, yeah. you know, for us yeah. to be able to take folks um, that are involved in our, some of our different programs, especially the small group program. Um, they learn how to process clothes and how to barb clothes and hang clothes and yeah. um, price It's a books retail and, business. It is. It is. I mean, you it's, know? it's coming from a different source, but Absolutely. it's a retail business. It is. And if, you know, if folks can, can get those skills there, they can learn those skills there, then they are much better set um, and prepared for community-based employment. Yeah. So we, we currently, I mean, it, it fluctuates. We do with it, especially with the stores, you have a lot of part-time, you know, a lot of part-time employees, but we usually hover around anywhere from 350 to 380 employees. And that includes the folks that are in our small group employment program because they are paid for their work. Yeah. They receive, um, they start at, at minimum wage and we have the ability to pay less than minimum wage to hold that certificate, but we never did. Mm -hmm. We've always paid people at least minimum wage. And gives them their worth. Oh, to see. It gives them a goal. Uh, there's a, a, a picture that I have on my desk and there's a, it's a gentleman who's been with us forever. He lives with his, you know, lives with his mom. 
And he is, he's actually been on a, a, a few billboards lately. Um, he is the happiest individual I've ever known in my life. I mean, just, he puts a smile on your face. As soon as you look at him, you have to smile. Yeah. And he got to go to work in the small group employment program. And there's a picture that we have of him holding his first check. Mm. And it's something he never thought he would be able to do. His yeah. mom didn't, you know, she was very supportive. Don't get me wrong, but you know, a little yeah. hesitant and, and wondering if he would ever be able to do that. And um, that's what it's all about. Kate Dempsey Jones, how can someone get involved or help Goodwill Industries? Because it doesn't all come from the government. No, oh no, no, yeah. it does not. Um, the, as I mentioned, the stores are our, are our major fundraising arm. So through their donations, mm -hmm. um, through shopping at the store, um, supporting the stores, supports our individuals that we serve. You know, it's, 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 it's that. You simple. don't really do any separate fundraising. Very little, very little. Um, we have talked about being a little bit more traditional in terms of fundraising only because um, it's, you know, it, it's tough. The cost of care is not covered by the reimbursement rate. It's yeah. just not, you know, um, you know, everybody went through a horrible staffing crisis, um, you know, over these last few years. We were in a staffing crisis. Our industry, okay, was in a staffing crisis prior to COVID. Yeah. And COVID really just shined the light on how fragile this system is. Uh, when you have group homes and they operate 24 7, you know, we could close the stores. You can't close a group home. Yeah. And these folks needed to be cared for. And people were frightened and, and rightfully so. You know, they didn't want to get COVID, they didn't want to give COVID to one of our one of the people they care for because yeah. they're so compromised. Um, so it's, it's tough and you need to, you know, when you have Dunkin' Donuts or McDonald's paying, you know, $17 an hour and we've got to compete with that starting rate, the reimbursement rate doesn't cover that. doesn't but come close to covering that. I don't that. know that they have the fulfillment. They don't <laughs> have working in goodwill, but they, they don't. But, yeah, but and I've you know I've I've said that you know it yeah. is a tremendously rewarding career, but people still have to pay their bills. Yeah, you know, and it's um, the, the work that we ask folks to do, and then not be able to pay them what they would get paid if they were you know working in the fast sure. food industry sure. or in a grocery store. Um, the fulfillment, it is a calling, you know, but that fulfillment only goes so far. You still mm. got to pay the rent. You got to mm. feed your kids. Well, Kate Dempsey Jones, thank you so much for coming by to give us a little overview of Goodwill. Uh, Goodwill Industries is, it, it's, it's a quarter of the community. And well, thank, thank you. you, Bob. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to, to tell people about what we do because I love it. My pleasure. I, I know when it's a good show, when I learn and I get my heartstrings tugged just a little bit. And that was today. Uh, between Dr. France, uh, Rebecca Martino, Pat Sandone, we learned a lot. And then we found out about Goodwill and we found out they do a lot for very special people. Great to be with you.